All right, welcome back to Technique Quad. Today we're talking about barbell glute bridges. So like I said, we're gonna talk about barbell glute bridges today, and uh, really we're gonna talk about a progression for all types of glute bridges. So uh, first, if you don't know what a barbell glute bridge is, or just what a glute bridge in general is, it looks like this. You set a bar on your hips, grab wherever, and then you're just squeezing your butt and pushing your hips to the sky with your ribs down, and you're just doing reps like this. And barbells are obviously nice and convenient because just like every other movement, you can you know, load to whatever weight you're comfortable with, but there's a million other ways you can do it as well. So uh, before we go through the progression and we show you how to load and you know, tell you how many sets and reps and all that to do, uh, first, why barbell glute bridges and, um, you know, and also why don't you see them very often? Um, you know, they were, they were kind of pioneered and brought into the strength and conditioning community um, you know, over the last like 10 years or so by uh, Brett Contreras, who, who's kind of known as the glute guy. Uh, you know, follow him on, on social media and whatnot. If you uh, haven't seen his stuff, he, uh, he's very smart. Uh, hope to get him on the show one of these days, actually. Um, very smart guy, and he kind of pioneered uh, terminal hip extension and uh, a lot of these kind of glute dominant exercises and a whole bunch of other stuff too. Great dude, uh, very smart, but um, glute bridges is one of the, the main things that really stuck in the world of strength and conditioning in the world of performance uh, through a lot of his work. So um, it's not common in the CrossFit world yet. It's kind of sneaking its way in since CrossFit's kind of trailing strength and conditioning or good strength and conditioning anyway, uh, a little bit. So it's working its way in right now, especially for the competitive athletes because uh, they're, they're trying it out and they're seeing a lot of value in it. So the reason it's valuable is a lot of people tend to be very, especially when you're coming out of uh, either a bad strength and conditioning program or no strength and conditioning program, you tend to be a very uh, a quad dominant athlete it means you use your quads probably more than you use your hips, you know, muted hip function or weak glutes or whatever you want to say. A lot of people have that problem where they got flat asses and big quads, right? So if you, if you got a profile, you got no ass and big quads, this is probably you. So uh, if you have a big ass, it doesn't mean that your ass is working, but it's a, a good sign that at least it's do, doing something. So uh, as, far as, as far as what uh, your glutes are going to be doing uh, while you're moving, Generally, if I'm very bent over and I'm bending at the hip, down here when you feel that stretch in your hamstrings, if I'm doing an RDL or something, right here, that big stretch in my hamstrings, my hamstrings have a good mechanical advantage to kind of pull me back up. But once I get up here, now my glutes are starting to take over the, the bulk of the, the part that is gonna finish this movement. So as I, as I squeeze my glutes, they're gonna pull me through the end of my range of motion. That's called terminal hip extension. And then also something that people don't talk about is that they're also gonna help me hyperextend my hip, where it's kind of pulling my hip past, past neutral and all the way you know, as far as it can possibly go. So if you think about running or, or especially sprinting, where I'm, I'm cycling through and then I'm, I'm coming here, my hip is hyperextended and then I cycle back through. Uh, being able to you know, still produce force once I contact the ground and then pull myself all the way through, certainly my hamstrings and the, and the rest of my legs are gonna be doing something, but my glutes are gonna have a big role in that movement. And if you don't have strong, strong glutes and they can't contract through that, that tiny bit of hyperextension at the hip joint, then uh, you're not gonna be as fast as you would otherwise. Likewise, you know, if you see people deadlift and they, they have all these funny compensations where <laughs> they get here and they come off the ground and they're okay and then they get here and they, they start, they're shaking here and they, they can't seem to finish the lift, a lot of times that's because they have weak glutes. Likewise, if they get to here again and to finish the lift, they don't actually extend their hip and they instead hyperextend their back like this, where my hip is bent and my back is hyperextended, a lot of times they have weak glutes. And if I can just extend my hips all the way like this, that's finishing the movement at the hip joint. This is not a finished movement. I look like I'm standing all the way up, but actually my back's hyperextended, my low back's hyperextended, my glutes aren't, aren't, aren't contracting maximally, and uh, my hip joint is slightly bent. And actually, usually too, if you can see my knees, they're usually locked out, okay? So if I can soften my knee, just make it straight rather than locked out, squeeze my glutes, pull my ribs down, pull my shoulders back, now I'm standing all the way straight up, and I'm in a good solid position, my back's not at risk, and, and I have actually completed the movement. Okay. Uh, another thing that people tend to do is, especially when deadlifting, if I stick with the same example here, is I'll stand up, maybe I get to here, and I can't finish it, and then I'll, I'll lean back and I'll slide my knees under, and I'll try and use my quads to get up. Okay. That's a compensation. I'll say rather it can be a compensation for weak glutes, 
my stronger quads are trying to take over the movement because my glutes can't seem to do, to, do their, to do their job where it's quads, hamstrings, glutes, adductors, where it's all the muscles, the big muscles in your legs working together to finish the movement. Glutes aren't doing the job. I'm like, well, I got strong quads. I'll let them kind of do the lift for me. Okay? So uh, the list could go on, but long story short, having strong glutes is a very important thing. Um, on a separate uh, kind of side note, uh, important to not getting injured. Anytime you see somebody squat and they do this kind of knee wobble thing where their knees come in, your glutes are external rotators, right? They're, one of their jobs is to pull your, your knee out by externally rotating your hip. So a lot of times, people that have this problem where they, they do the knee wobble, a lot of times that means that they're, they're not getting enough activation out of their glutes. If they can strengthen their hips and the other hip external rotators, they're much more likely uh, to keep their knees healthy, to not have their knee dive in, to not you know, tear their ACL, to not beat up their medial meniscus, to not get you know, pate patellofemoral tracking problems, and they're much more likely to have a healthier knee in the long run. So I showed you what a glute bridge looks like. Uh, we're going to walk through a short progression. In fact, I'll probably come here. It's probably easier. Walk through a short progression. The easiest thing, it's about to hop on the ground. The easiest thing uh, is to do a short uh, series of activation drills uh, where you're just getting your glutes used to contracting maximally, you know, in this fully hip extended position. Okay? So I'm just going to stand here and just squeeze my butt together. Just getting my glutes used to contracting. If you want to, you know, put your thumbs on or just, you know, kind of get a handful, you can do that too. Just make sure that your glutes are contracting all the way. If I have very short hip flexors or I'm tight, you know, kind of anywhere in this range, then I might, I might not be able to get full, full length out of the front side here. And that, can, that pulled together is going to bend my hip like that. It's going to make my glutes, it's going to make it hard for my glutes to pull this apart if this is all very short. So uh, at a minimum, you're going to have to stretch your hip flexors if you just, no matter what you do, you can't get past this kind of hyperextended position. If you walk around with this anterior pelvic tilt all the time, then you might be chronically short on the front side of your hip. Okay? So, um, you know, just basic stretches. You know, if you, have a, if you have a band here, I don't have a band for the moment. If you have a band here tied around your hip and it's pulling you forward and you, you got your ribs down, you're squeezing your glute, uh, that's one of the best stretches for uh, the front side of your hips. Uh, also, the couch stretch where you're doing basically the same thing, but your, um, but your knee is bent. Um, go watch K-Stars. He got, he, he's got a million videos on the couch stretch and, and stretching your hip flexors. Uh, Progression-wise, here's what it looks like. The easiest thing to do is just lay on your back. Usually, I pull my toes off the ground. If your heels are down and your toes are up, it makes it where you're automatically pushing with your heels because you don't have another option. And anytime you're pushing with your heels, it's much more likely that you're going to be able to get a good solid glute contraction. So I'm here. All I'm going to do is keep my ribs down and push my hips as high as I can with my ribs down. I don't want to hyperextend like this. I don't want to pop my ribs and hyperextend my back. I want to keep a neutral spine. My ribs are down. And my hips are, are pushed up as high as I can with my ribs down. You should be able to feel the fact that your glutes are contracting. So hold it for a second, get a nice squeeze, go back down. Hips up, squeeze your glutes, ribs down, and squeeze for a second or two. And you can use that if you're brand spanking new and you have a lot of problems with this. If it's really hard, you can actually use that as your, you know, your exercise for the day. You can do it in your warm-ups, or like I said, you can actually use it as a real assistance movement um, towards the end of your workouts. You know, probably one of the last things you do on the day. You know, you probably wouldn't metcon with it. It's probably not truly strength work if you're you know, if you're doing it without any additional weight, um, although you know, strength work, work for you certainly, but you know, I wouldn't put it in the category of, of the big movements. So that's kind of level one. Uh, level two, level two would be to do it with one leg. So you pull one knee up as high as you can, again, ribs down, and then you just, same thing, I'm gonna contract my glute, ribs down, I'm trying to get nice and straight here with my knee as high as possible, and then I go back down to the ground. Okay? So one more rep, knee as high as possible, Heel down, get full extension, squeezing my glute. I want to make sure that I don't twist. I'm not out to the side. I'm not leaning. I'm not, I'm not funny in any way. I'm nice and straight. I look just exactly like I would look uh, if I was doing two legs at a time. In fact, what a lot of people do is they'll oops, fix myself. They'll be here, and they'll try to be nice and stable, and then they'll just extend one leg, and they'll see if they move at all. And if you extend one leg and you, you really fall off, then you probably don't want to move on to one leg yet. Uh, you can stick with two legs until you get a little bit stronger. Huh? 
So that's two variations that are just body weight only. And then you can start loading it after that. Obviously the best way is probably with a barbell, uh, but if you don't wanna do a barbell yet or some people think it kinda of just doesn't feel that great, you can use a plate or a kettlebell uh, or whatever you're comfortable with. But kettlebell is easy. You can basically just set it right on your stomach as long as it's not too heavy, obviously. And then same thing, you're just gonna push up. Push up and squeeze your glutes. Easy enough, or like I said, or like I showed rather earlier, uh, you can do it with a barbell. Uh, I'll give you a few more tips on the barbell specifically. So for me, I usually sit down and then just roll it over me. You have these two bones right here. These are your, your as is, your as is bones, your anterior superior, anterior superior iliac spine. So those little bones, you want to go right below those bones, basically right on your belt line with the bar. That's where it's going to be comfortable. It'll basically be like right, aclo right across your bladder. And then for me, I tend to grab pretty wide, but you don't have to. I just think it's more comfortable for me. And I put my head all the way down to the ground, toes up. I kind of pick my hips up off the ground just a little bit just to get contact with the bar, just so I know that I'm stable. And then I pull my shoulder blades back. And then same thing, squeeze my butt, hips up, ribs down. Just like this. And the reason I like grabbing all the way out is because I'm actually straight armed right now. For me, I basically grab exactly where I snatch. That way I'm hitting right on my hips. I can be right here. And that way the bar doesn't roll into me and I don't have to expend that much energy with my arms. And chances are it wouldn't roll into me anyway, but uh, that seems to be what's most comfortable for me. So you're welcome to try that. Uh, as far as how much to do, of glute bridges. You know, there's no, no magic number to it, but for the most part, it's assistance movement. You'll probably do it towards the end of your workouts or at least towards the end of your, of your strength session. So, you know, standard, you know, you know, two to four sets, eight to, eight to 20 reps, something like that would be totally fine. You know, moving to failure would be totally fine as long as you're not doing a whole lot of, uh, you know, a whole lot of stuff right afterward where, uh, number one, you know that you're gonna have problems. If you're gonna be, go do a bunch of front squats in a Metcon afterward and you know that your knees always wobble in, then you probably don't wanna fry your glutes right before you go do that Metcon where you're gonna be fatigued with already pre-exhausted glutes. That's not a very good idea. So uh, if you have trouble with this, you know, do some glute activation in your warmup, do some glute strengthening towards the end of your workout. And then along with that, as your glutes get stronger, obviously, you know, try to focus more on getting a very strong glute contraction on your primary movements like your deadlifts, your, your front squats, your back squats, your box squats, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That way you can get uh, good at this newfound strength you know, when it matters on the movements that you're gonna do you know, in a competition or just uh, where you're, you're trying to set a PR on anything that, that matters to you. One last final point, if you're a person that has you know, knee trouble or, or even back trouble or maybe you, you break a toe or you sprain an ankle or, or something like that, uh, there's also a great movement to do to make sure that you're still getting a lot of you know, quality work done for your hips you know, while you're rehabbing something that has given you trouble. Uh, knees are probably the most common. Uh, if your back's a little achy, you probably could do this depending on what's wrong with your back. Uh, just depends on how your back feels, but it's worth trying out. If it hurts your back, obviously don't do it. Uh, but definitely knees, you know, if you're a person that squats a lot and you're getting you know, like patellofemoral pain or, or something is just achy or bugging you on your knees, uh, it's not, not a lot of stress on your knees overall, but uh, there's no sense in, in letting, your, uh, letting your hips you know, get weaker as you're resting your knees. Uh, so it's a good way to you know, stay in the game while you're healing up. That's it for glute bridges for today. If you have any questions for us, uh, you can always go to barbellshrug.com. In the bottom right corner, there's a little questions box. You're welcome to fill that out, or you can always email help at barbellshrug.com. Uh, or if you just wanna kinda have a conversation, and we're always available uh, on Facebook, just go to our Facebook wall, post a question. We can answer, uh, other fans from the show can answer as well. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you another day. Join the conversation every week after the episode over at barbellshrug.com. This is also where you'll find new episodes of Barbell Shrugged, Technique Wad, Nuggets and Pearls, Barbell Business, Get Change, plus new articles every day on our daily blog, written by us, guests of the show, and some of the biggest names in strength and conditioning. So, go there and leave a comment now. Oh my gosh, wow, that's so cool. Yay, that's so awesome. Did you like this video? If so, subscribe to our channel and share this with your friends. 
And if you want even more free, awesome resources to help you reach your fitness goals, plus some updates that we only share over email, head over to barbellshrug.com and sign up for the newsletter.